Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. So if it's the first time that you come across this channel, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee guys, right? Here we basically go through grade 11, grade 12, grade 10, mathematics and mathematical literacy content, right? So I go through all the contents that you guys go, um, do in school and I also do past papers to help you guys prepare for your final exams, right? and in today's video tutorial grade 11s we are going to be tackling the grade 11 mathematical literacy paper 2 that was written in november 2022 by the eastern cape province learners right and it's very important that you guys note that we are going to be using this paper to revise concepts topics right that we have learned throughout um the grade 11 year so we're just using this paper just to test and see if we still understand or we understand concepts that we've learned um in grade 11 okay and in this video tutorial guys we are going to be tackling question one okay we're going to be looking at question 1.1 question 1.2 question 1.3 right as well as question 1.4 okay and question one guys it deals with parking tariffs right um it deals with us calculating parameters so we've got some measurement questions there right we've got some questions um relating to what you guys learned when you were dealing with the different types of scales right and also you basically taking knowledge that you guys have learned from analyzing a map right and what the different letters um that symbolize the different roads on the map mean. okay so that is what we're going to be focusing on on today's video tutorial so before we get started with today's video tutorial guys please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel please make sure that you click on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload a new video tutorial guys and also please don't forget to give this video tutorial a huge thumbs up guys because it really really helps the channel grow and it helps the channel to reach more learners that want to better their mathematics marks also guys please share these video tutorials with your friends a lot of you guys are going to be going to grade um 12 next year all of you guys are going to grade 12 next year right and i've got amazing content that i've created for you guys um and you'll see that when you get to grade 12 so please make sure that you share the channel with your friends please make sure that you have your notification bells turned on because you are really going to enjoy it here all right so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial So like I mentioned, we're going to be tackling question one um, and let's get started with question 1.1. It says the table below shows the relationship between the hours and the rate. OK, it said of charged per hour or part thereof. So I removed the word of there, OK, because it, it the sentence doesn't make sense. Right. With that there, it now reads as the table below shows the relationship between hours and the rate charged per hour or part thereof okay tariffs include value added tax right and refer to the table and answer the questions that follow okay so we are basically told that this table here that is given to us right all these values they've already included your fact okay right so what's very important from this question okay and i have to emphasize this is this statement here is that the hours we're given the hours right and the rate that is charged per hour right or part thereof okay that part thereof there okay is very important because now it tells you how you are supposed to go about calculating how much you will now have to pay okay for parking at this particular area for a particular amount of time okay so you need to take note of that and i will go into detail into what it means when we look at the question okay so we're given table one and it says the parking fees for this area okay so these are the hours in the first column okay so if you park there for between zero to two hours 
you're going to pay five rand, okay? So the rate charged per hour or part thereof is five rand, okay? So what does that mean? If you had to now, you know, think about it mathematically, okay? If they tell you that they charge you five rand, okay? This is the rate charged, okay? Per hour, okay? So it means that, okay? The rate, if you had to now visualize it in a mathematical way, it is five rand per one hour. So if you park um, in this area for zero hours, one hour, two hours, right, you will get charged five rand per one hour or part thereof. Okay, so what does that part thereof mean? me let's say for example right you parked in this area for 1.5 hours okay so what would this mean usually if they didn't say part thereof right for you to determine how much you would have to pay um towards this parking um fee right you would just take that 1.5 hours right then you'd multiply by what we want okay we want to determine how much you'd pay which is that five rand over one hour okay then you'll notice that okay the hours hours cancel and then you'll find that okay that means that for just parking there for 1.5 hours i will just pay seven rand fifty okay so if they didn't include that part thereof that is how you'd basically go about calculating how much you'd pay for being there for 1.5 hours but now because they've included that part thereof what does this mean now okay it means that now as long as you are within this range you will pay five right so even if you're there for 1.8 hours even if you're there for 1.9 hours, even if you're there for 0 0.5 hours, you will still pay five rand, okay? So even if, let's say, for example, I'm there for 1.8 hours, right? That means that at the end of the day, I'm still paying a rate for a person, the same rates that a person would pay that was there for two hours. So you therefore have to like round this value up to two hours, right? And then multiply that by five rand over one hour to get how much you would pay. Okay, so that is what it means when they talk about that part thereof, right? It means that whatever value that you'll get that is a decimal that is within this range, you now need to basically round it up to this value, right? That value, right? That value, right? Because even if you are less than that value, let's say, for example, even if you stay there for like um, 3.2 hours, you would still pay the same rate as a person that stayed there at this area for four hours. So might as well just round it up to four hours and then you start calculating your tariff. So that, guys, very, very important. Please take note of that. It's very important. That part thereof comes up a lot even in grade 12 okay so you need to start getting yourself familiarized with what you need to do when they tell you that okay so i think we've analyzed the information that is given to us here right i think you guys understand what is expected from you i think we're more than ready to get started with analyzing the questions right we are also told that um to note if you have lost a ticket right you pay a penalty of 50 rand plus additional charges okay so the additional charges is that let's say you lost your ticket you'll pay 40 50 rand and let's say you lost your ticket and you were there for four hours so you'll pay that 50 rand plus the fee for being there for four hours okay so that's what it means there okay question 1.1.1 what is the rate charged if Mr. Sokutu parked his car for 8 hours and 15 minutes? So what would be the rates that now Mr. Sokutu would pay if he had parked his car at this place for 8 hours and um, 15 minutes? Okay, so you don't have to worry about um, how long the 15 minutes is in terms of hours, right? All that we know here from the given um, table is that if you park in this place for more than eight hours, right, you pay a fee of 40 rand. Okay, so then the rates that will be charged to Mr. Sukutu if you park there for eight hours and 15 minutes is just going to be 40 rand. Okay, because you pay 40 rand if you park at this area 
for more than eight hours okay okay so he'll pay 40 rand let's have a look at the next question it says write eight hours and 15 minutes in hours okay so here we need to convert okay um these 15 minutes into hours okay so how do we convert from minutes to hours all right we already know guys you need to ask yourself this how many minutes do we have in an hour right we already know that okay in one hour we have 60 minutes right okay that's what we already know so now we are going to use now this equation that we've drawn up here okay to help us convert these 15 minutes into hours okay because i mean we don't have to convert the eight hours because the eight hours is already in hours because remember we want to convert the eight hours and 15 minutes in two hours so we don't have to worry about these eight hours because they're already in hours all that we want to convert is these 15 minutes and we want to convert them into hours okay so how are we going to convert them into hours right we ask ourselves how many minutes do we have in one hour and i like i already said we have 60 minutes in an hour and then we're going to use this equation to help us convert how are we going to use this con uh, equation to convert like i mentioned um i use this method all the time because it makes conversions so easy right you will never go wrong with conversions when using this method all that you need to do you want to take that 15 minutes okay and from this equation what do we want we want to convert these minutes into hours so that means that you're going to multiply by what you want which is the hours so you're going to multiply by one hour right and you're going to divide by what do you have right so we already have our units guys when i talk about units i'm talking about the minutes the hours right so we already have our units in minutes so we're going to divide by what we have which is the 60 minutes okay so what do we notice here that 15 minutes guys you can just also write it as 15 divided by one Okay, it just helps us see that, okay, I've actually converted correctly because do you see that the minutes and the minutes are canceling, right? And you're only left with your units in hours. Do you see that? Okay, you left with the units in hours. Okay, so from here, if you just take your 15 multiplied by 1 divided by 60, or it's the same as just saying, 15 right because 15 times 1 is 15 divided by 60 okay it's the same as just doing that okay so if you take 15 divided by 60 what do you get guys 15 minutes when you convert that into hours is just 0 0.25 hours okay therefore 8 hours and 15 minutes converted into hours is just going to be that 8 hours, right? Plus 0 0.25 hours, okay? Which is equal to 8.25 hours. And you are basically done. All right, let's have a look at the next question. Question 1.2, right? It says Mr. DD, right, um, lost his ticket. When looking at the security cameras, they could see that he arrived at the mall at 11.30. So he arrived at the mall at 11.30, right? And that it was now 14.20. So it's 20 past 2 in the afternoon, okay? Okay, so question 1.2, right, says determine how much time lapsed, okay? So what do they mean when they say lapsed? So they want you to determine how much time was spent in the mall by Umiste TT, right? Okay, using the information that was given to us that he arrived at 11.30 and it was now 1420 so how much time did he now uh, basically spend at the mall how can we determine that guys right all that we're gonna do okay question 1.2.1 right to determine the time that was lapsed i'm just gonna show you a, a nice way to just think of it practically okay he basically arrived at the mall at what time 11 30 okay we are told that he arrived at 11 30 okay and we are told that now the time is 14 20. so how can we determine the time that has lapsed so i'm going to i'm just going to show you a practical way to think of it to help you count okay so if it's 11 30 
right? 11.30, right? 12.30, okay? 13.30, okay? Then 14.30, okay? So from here, we can see that, okay, it's one, two, three, three hours, okay, have basically elapsed. However, guys, we need to take into consideration that uh, the time now as he is with the security is 1420 and not 1430 okay so how can we now um get to 14 um 20 we already know that we've got two hours right and 60 minutes okay because remember i counted um three hours so that's the same as just saying three hours i've just converted the other hour into minutes right and we can just subtract 10 minutes because remember the time now is 1420. So we can just subtract 20, I mean 10 minutes from the 60. And if we just subtract 10 minutes from the 60, you'll see that okay, Mr. DG was in the mall for two hours and 50 minutes. Okay, so that's basically a nice way that you can think of uh basically counting for how long he has been um at this area okay all right so our conclusion is then to show your solution you will basically just take your 14 to 20 you're gonna take your 14 20 and you're gonna minus 11 30 to give your answer of he's been there for two hours and 50 minutes okay and i showed you just a nice practical way that you guys can that you guys can basically think about that one all right let's have a look at the next question question 1.2.2 calculate how much mr dd was charged okay so now right we already know that he has lost his parking ticket okay because that is what we are told here he has lost his ticket okay so con we already know that if you have lost a ticket right you pay 50 rand plus additional charges and remember when i started off the video tutorial i explained that the additional charges are the charges of you being there or you being parked in that area okay so that means that for us to calculate how much mr dd will pay right he needs to pay the fee for the lost ticket plus the fee for being there for the two hours and 50 minutes okay so the total that he is charged to pay right is going to be the fee for the lost ticket plus the fee for parking time okay so we already know that what is the uh, fee for the lost ticket we already know that that is just the 50 rand okay plus now we need to determine the fee for the parking time okay remember we already know that he was there for two hours right and 50 minutes okay right so if he's there for two hours and 50 minutes right that means that the interval that we're going to be working with right is this one here okay because he's there for more than two hours but less than three hours okay so remember when us for example if you had to now uh, convert these 50 minutes right into hours right for you to determine how many hours he was there for we already know that it will be two hours this is just additional information so that you guys understand this concept thoroughly okay if we had to now convert these 50 minutes into hours so that we know how many hours he was there at the mall for right so we're gonna just take that 50 we already know that i showed you guys um how we can convert from um hours from minutes to hours by using this equation right we already know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes so we can just say um 50 minutes multiplied by one divided by 60 okay that will give you 0 0.83 it recurs it's eight three 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 right okay meaning that he was basically at this area for two hours plus 0 0.83 hours okay meaning that he was there for 2.83 hours right okay right so to explain that part thereof we're not going to just take that 2.83 
hours, right? And now just multiply it by the seven rand, okay? Why? Because of that part thereof statement. All that we're going to do is we're just going to round this value up. Okay, because even if you're there for two hours, 50 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes, two hours, 10 minutes, okay, uh, two, two hours, one minute, right, you will still be charged seven rand, okay, just because you were there between the interval of two hours and three hours, okay. So in that case, yeah, for you to be able to calculate his fee, okay, his parking fee, it is just going to be all that you have to do now is you have to just round up this 2.83 hours right and it's just going to be three hours and you're going to then multiply that three hours um with the rate that they charge okay okay so for you to determine how much he, mr dd is going to pay we have to round this 2.83 hours up right and it's just going to be three hours and then all that you need to do now you will then multiply these three hours by um, the parking tariff right that they charge which is if you stay there for like three hours you get charged seven rand so you'll just multiply that by seven rand okay per one hour that you spend there and that is how you are going to basically get your amount okay however guys this was actually even unnecessary i was just going into the details so that you can tackle this question from any direction okay so from here since you guys understand um what this means you just now understand that if we are told that he was there for two hours and 50 minutes right we found that okay that is like approximately uh 2.83 hours but you don't even have to just you don't even have to um convert that into to um hours all that we can do now we know that the two hours and 50 minutes is in this interval right it's in this interval and if you're in this interval right no matter even if you spent just two hours and 30 minutes you will still pay that seven rand okay so then to calculate um the parking fee right for being in the mall for three hours right what are we going to do we just then going to take three okay we're going to take the three hours right and you're going to multiply it by the fee is seven rand per hour okay so it's seven rand per hour okay all right and if you pass it into your calculator you'll see that so you'll see that the hours and the hours cancel leaving you with your units in rands okay so if you take 50 and you plus um three times okay so if you take 50 rand so that's just going to be 50 rand plus what is three times seven it's 21 rand okay meaning that you want to take 50 plus 21 to 71 rand all right and that's how you're supposed to go about um tackling this question so i just went into detail just to help you um even tackle this question if they ask you to now maybe convert it into hours convert the minutes into hours then you know what what you guys are supposed to do so that you guys also understand how that part thereof statement actually fits into this whole scenario okay so i hope that i clarified that point for you guys okay let's have a look at question 1.3 okay for question 1.3 it says refer to the rectangle diagram or rectangular diagram below and answer the questions that follows okay so we're given a rectangle here right the length of this rectangle is 210 centimeters and the breadth right is 100 centimeters okay right so question 1.3.1 says define the term parameter okay so to help you guys understand um the concept of parameter if i were to basically take a string né, and put it around this rectangle i'm putting the string around this rectangle putting the string around the rectangle around the rectangle right and then i cut my string and then i measure the string against my ruler right i will get what the length around this uh, rectangle is okay so when we are calculating parameter guys we are basically getting what the total distance or the total length is around or on the outline of a shape okay so that is how we're going to um define it so that when we're calculating parameter all that we're trying to do is we're trying to get the total length around the outline 
all the shapes. Okay, so let's write that down. Okay, so the parameter is the total length around the outline of the shape. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. It says determine question one point three point two. Determine the parameter of the rectangular diagram in centimeters okay so we already defined what a parameter is and i already explained what it means practically all right so how would we then calculate the parameter of this uh, rectangular diagram okay all that we need to do then to get what the parameter of this rectangular diagram is we need to add up the total lengths around this shape right so we already know that the length from there to there is a 210 centimeters okay the length from there to there is 100 centimeters what would be the length from there to there it's still 210 centimeters and what would be the length from there to there it's the same length as that one which is a hundred centimeters so for us to get the parameter all that we need to do is we need to add up all these values together and that is how we determine the parameter of this rectangular diagram, okay? So therefore the parameter, 210 centimeters plus 100 centimeters plus 210 centimeters plus 100 centimeters. If you punch that into your calculator, you'll find that the total parameter of this rectangular diagram is equal to 620 centimeters okay okay question 1.3.3 it says okay question 1.3.3 it says give the name of the scale found on this diagram okay so we see here that we were given a scale here right okay at the bottom of our rectangle right and this scale is basically one is to a hundred so what type of a scale is given here all right so just to add additional information guys you know when you're dealing with scales you get different types of scales that you guys see when you are doing your map work okay you'll find that you'll get like a, a number scale which is the scale that is given here and sometimes you will get a bar scale so you need to be able to work with these different scales to help you um determine to help you move from a measured distance to an actual distance okay but in this case what type of a scale is given to us you guys can see that yeah we are given a number scale or a numerical scale okay so let's write that down so we're given a numerical scale right and then question 1.3.4 says explain what scale one to a hundred means okay so guys when you see these different scales what do they mean okay if they give you one is to a hundred what does that mean okay so one is to a hundred one to a hundred what does this mean so it basically means that the measured okay length on paper or what the measured length on paper is equal to these units in real life okay so your measured length to the actual units in real life so one unit on paper is equal to a hundred units in real life so you guys need to understand um, that about your number scale that it tells you that if you measure one unit on paper then it means that it's actually a hundred units in real life for example if you measured five centimeters on the paper how would you then convert these uh, measured units into an actual length in real life all that you would need to do we just multiply it by a hundred to get what the to be able to find what the actual length is in real life okay so that is basically what it means it means that the, okay it means that one unit on the map okay one unit on the map represents a hundred units in real life all right and that is basically it. okay let's have a look at question 1.4 okay question 1.4.9 says identify from the list below a provincial road in south africa okay so we are given the following right we're given the n10 the r44 and the m75 so from these three values okay 
which one represents a provincial road okay so here it's very important that you guys understand that in our maps we get different roads that are represented you'll see an n something on your map you'll see an r something on your map you'll see an m something on your map right and you guys need to understand when you see an n right that represents your national routes national road these are roads and freeways which connect major cities okay when you see an r on our map right this represents your provincial routes or roads right and these are routes that serve as feeders these are the roads that feed into the national routes right and then you also get an m on your map and the m represents your metropolitan roads or routes okay and this basically are your major routes around cities in south africa okay so in this case right they just want us to want you guys to choose from the list below which one is a provincial road right we already know that the n is a national road so it's not that one we already know that the m is the metropolitan road so it's not that one so therefore the r44 is the one that represents your provincial road in south africa okay okay so it's your r44 represents your provincial road okay question 1.4.2 it says define the term provincial road in the above context so what is a provincial road okay so i already explained that a provincial road guys right these are routes that serve as feeders to your national roads okay these are the roads that feed into your national uh, your national roads okay and i'm sure if you guys stay in johannesburg all right or on johannesburg you'll know that the r21 is a provincial road okay it feeds into your national routes like your n1s and your n3s and so on and so forth okay so in this case to define the term provincial road okay so your provincial roads um serve as feeders to the national routes okay and we are basically done with question one guys right and i hope that i explained all these concepts for you guys in detail and i'll see you guys on my next tutorial in the next tutorial guys we are going to be tackling question number two that is it guys and i'll see you guys on my next upload distance learning with lee where i make learning mathematics super easy guys.